Here we have an anterior view of the arm, so the front of the arm. You can see the medial edge of the scapula here. And you can actually see where the cut would be for the clavicle coming across the body. And so we're going to start with our anterior view of the arm and we'll just work our way down. So the first muscle we're going to look at is called the subscapularis muscle and it sits in the subscapular fossa of the scapula. So the subscapularis muscle. Here you can see the deltoid muscle forming the cap of the shoulder. And again, we're in an anterior view. Here we have our biceps brachii, one of the major, arm, major muscles of the arm. This is what pops up when you make a muscle to try to impress someone. So the biceps brachii. Coming over, again, working our way from lateral to medial. So here's the biceps brachii. Here's a muscle called the coracobrachialis. The coracobrachialis. Brachialis refers to the, to the brachium, which is another name for the humerus, for the upper arm. And coracobrachialis attaches to the coracoid process of the scapula and also to the humerus, to the brachium. So coracobrachialis. You can also see, even though we're on the anterior view, but because of the orientation, you can actually see part of the triceps brachii, which we'll look at in more detail when we look at the posterior view, but you can actually see the triceps brachii as well. And then another major muscle of the arm, so here's that biceps brachii, another major muscle of the arm is called the brachialis muscle. And you can see the brachialis muscle here, and it doesn't look all that impressive until you remove the biceps brachii. And then you can see that this brachialis muscle is actually a major muscle of the arm as well to help flex the arm or flex the forearm. So here you can see the brachialis muscle. And now again, we're just going to move our way distally further away towards the forearm and then towards the hand. And just to look at our hand, here's, our, here's the thumb and then here's his, the pinky. So this muscle or this bone under here is the radius and then the ulna. Because if you remember, if you assume the anatomical position, your thumbs are laterally located. So here's our thumb, the radius, and our pinky, the ulna, because these muscles are going to be named for that. So here you have a muscle that forms sort of the lateral part of the arm. And this is called the brachioradialis muscle, the brachioradialis muscle. And remember, brachio refers to the, to the humerus up here, the brachium and then radialis because it attaches towards the thumb side. And then taking a look at the muscles of the forearm, the superficial muscles of the forearm, you have a muscle here called the pronator teres, the pronator teres. Here you have the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi radialis. And I know that that's the flexor carpi radialis because it's on the forearm, so when it contracts, it's gonna bring my fingers closer to my um, to my forearm, so basically making a fist, and it's on the radial side because here's my thumb. So there's my flexor carpi radialis. Running right down the midline of our arm, again very superficially, this is called the palmaris longus. And it's a long muscle and helps, attaches to tendons of my palm here. So the palmaris longus. And then if we have a flexor carpi radialis, it's probably likely that we also have a flexor carpi ulnaris attached to the pinky side along the ulna. And so here you can see that muscle here, the flexor carpi ulnaris here. And again, just to, for completeness sake, here's the pronator teres, the flexor carpi radialis, the palmaris longus, and the flexor carpi ulnaris.